Proto-Indo-European pantheon of gods is believed to have originated in the Pontic Caspian Black Sea Steppe region, a region that spans from modern-day Ukraine, Russia, and Kazakhstan all the way over to Europe. As the Proto-Indo-Europeans migrated and interacted with other cultures, their religious beliefs spread and evolved. The Vedic religion, which emerged in ancient India around 1500 BCE, shares many similarities with these Proto-Indo-Europeans. For example, the Vedic god Indra, the king of the gods, the god of thunder, is strikingly similar to the Proto-Indo-European god Perkwanos. Similarly, the Vedic god of fire, Agni, can be traced back to the Proto-Indo-European god Anguanos. The influence of the Proto-Indo-European pantheon can also be seen in Greco-Roman mythology. The Greek god Zeus and the Roman god Jupiter both share characteristics with the sky god Dias Petar. Additionally, the Greek god of the sea Poseidon and the Roman god Neptune have similarities with the Proto-Indo-European god of water, Hypnomneptos. The Sumerians, who inhabited modern-day Iraq, developed one of the earliest known systems of writing, the cuneiform script. This allowed them to record their religious beliefs, which centered around a pantheon of gods including Anu, the god of the sky, and Enlil, the god of wind and storms. These gods would later influence the religious beliefs of the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. The Pelasgians, however, were pre-Hellenic people who inhabited parts of Greece and the Aegean region before the arrival of Greeks. Little is known about their religion, as there are few surviving records or artifacts. However, it is believed that they practiced a form of animism or nature worship with a focus on fertility and agricultural deities. Some scholars suggest that the Pelasgians may have influenced the development of early Greek religion, in particular the worship of the earth goddess Gaia and other Chthonic deities. In pre-dynastic Egypt, before the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt around 3000 BCE, various local deities were worshipped. Some of these deities, such as the falcon god Horus and the cow goddess Hathor, would later be incorporated in the Egyptian pantheon during the dynastic period. The early Egyptians also believed in the concept of Mat, cosmic order that maintained balance and harmony in the universe. The Minoans, centered around the island of Crete, was another influential Bronze Age culture. These Minoans are best known for this palace that I mentioned earlier at Knossos, which featured elaborate frescoes depicting religious scenes. Minoan religion appears to have been centered around a great goddess who was associated with fertility, nature, and possibly the underworld. The Minoans also had a male god depicted as a bull or a bull-headed man who connected with Bacchus may have been the consort to the great goddess. Dionysus shows up in the earliest forms of writing, as well as hieroglyphs, predating writing itself. The Minoan religion was centered around the worship of these various deities, with a strong emphasis on the female goddess, the serpent goddess. The primary deity was this mother goddess, who was associated with animals and nature. Other important deities, the master of animals and sky father, were a part of this pantheon, and the Minoans practiced rituals involving animal sacrifices, processions, orgies, and offerings. Their religious symbols included the double-headed axe, the bull, and the serpent. The Roman pantheon was influenced by these various cultures, Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome. Manu and Yemo are figures from Indo-European mythology, just like Romulus and Remus are the legendary founders of Rome and Roman mythology, Manu and Yemo are believed to be the first man and first king respectively in the Indo-European mythological tradition. In some versions of the myth, 
Yimo is sacrificed by Manu to create the world, just as Romulus kills Remus in order to build Rome. In the Indian myths, Manu, the first man, and his twin brother, Yama, is sacrificed and is the first to die, who becomes the king of the underworld, while Manu becomes the father of mankind and survives a flood like Noah and Gilgamesh. The god Mars, the Roman god of war and oaths, is connected to the Proto-Indo-European god Mawart, the deity of war and storms. This figure is also related to the Greek Ares in the Hindu Marutas. Neptune, the Roman god of the sea, is linked to the Proto-Indo-European Neptos, the deity of water and underworld. This figure is also related to the Vedic god Napat and the Irish god Nakat. Minerva, the Roman goddess of wisdom and war, is associated with the Proto-Indo-European goddess Hesos, the deity of dawn, and this figure is also related to Athena and Eos and the Hindu goddess Ushas. Venus, also related to this goddess as well, is the goddess of love and beauty and fertility. Also, the dawn goddess, who is known in Latin as Lucifer, light bringer. Hewos is the figure in the Proto-Indo-European pantheon related to this. There is also Perquanos, the lord of oaks, which reminds one of Zeus of Dodona, one of the ancient wonders of the world, surrounded by oak trees. And like Perquanos, he is a sky god connected with thunder and lightning. Obvious connections to Indra as well as Zeus. Keranos, the name of Zeus's thunderbolt. The Hercina, spring nymph, associated with the river of the same name, identified with Demeter. The name could be a bowering, as it rather follows a Celtic sound law, which explains why Indra and Dias Pitar in Hindu mythology are two distinct gods, unlike how Zeus takes on the role of both and is synced with Jupiter, both related to Dias or Day Father. Jupiter, the king of the gods in the Roman pantheon, is associated with Dias Pitar, the sky father. This deity is also the precursor to Zeus, as I've mentioned, and the Hindu god Dias Pitta. This god, although a sky father, seems to be connected with an underworld king of Hades known as Dis Pater. Dis Pater, otherwise known as Rex Infernus or Pluto, is a Roman god of the underworld. Dis was originally associated with fertile agricultural land and mineral wealth, and since those minerals came from underground, he was later equated with Chthonic deities Dionysos, Pluto, Hades, as well as Saturn, who becomes the king of the underworld and rules the golden age where everybody has wealth. <laughs> <laughs>